Hi, my name is Connor Din, and this is my smart doorbell detection system. This project was pretty important to me because not only do I want to find out if someone's breaking into our apartment, but my roommates have been stealing food from my refrigerator and I want to know who it is. So first I will run down the code and then show you my setup, and then I will do a full demonstration of my system. So let's give a first rundown of the code. So up here, these are the packages that I'm going to be using. Uh, the first thing I do is establish an email address and password and use Yagmail to use that address to send emails. Uh, and this algorithm is made up of two major functions. This first function is the mask image. Um, and I use the cv2.selectRLY function to find points of this mask. And those points are then created into a polygon and that polygon is filled with white space. And then that white space is replaced with the original image. Uh, so that creates our masked image. And that is then resized, converted to grayscale and blurred to create our gray, gray image. And, I, and with the blur, I use a seven by seven kernel size because some of the larger kernel sizes didn't let the detection work, I guess. Like the detector values weren't catching on to any motion. So I went with the seven by seven. And the second function, the frame comparison function, that is basically the pixel by pixel comparison. And it uses a threshold value of 50. So in this nested for loop, you see that at a certain pixel, um, the difference between the grayscale values of the two images, if that was greater than the threshold value, then we would set this detector value to the high value, which is 255. And now we get into our main function. So this counter and this frame counter, those are initialized at zero. And we'll see the importance of those variables later. Um, and we initialize the webcam here, and then I have a delay for two seconds with the time that sleep function. So I allow for two seconds just to have the camera when it's opening up, adjust the lighting. Now we get to our big while loop here. Uh, so with this time string, we have, we are able to create a unique name for our video files that we save later. Um, and we'll be seeing that we use this time dot string F time function for a lot of unique file naming um and down here this if, if else statement this distinguishes between the first frame and the second frame that is being compared so all the odd number frames are run through this section and we see that the mask image function is called here i also have a delay of a quarter second in order to, to distinguish between the two frames enough visually um and I thought, that was enough, I thought that was an appropriate time for that. Um, and then we run our frame comparison function and that gives us our detector total value. And then for the detector total, I set a threshold of 25,000. I thought that just during testing, a lot of values weren't able to reach like 30,000 as was in the lecture. Uh, so I put it down a little bit and most of the motion was able to be detected with this threshold. So when the detector total exceeds this threshold, I save these two the two frames into my computer at as at that certain unique name, um, and I start the, the email processing. So the email contents I have here as doorbell has detected motion in the region of interest and have that certain unique time. In this yag.send function, I can send an email to a certain address with a subject, with the contents, and then also with my two frames um, as the attachments. So after that, I start recording the video and it was shot in 15 frames per second. And I wanted the video to be 10 seconds. So you see with this frame counter, um, it iterates until it gets to this video duration times SPS or FPS value of 150 frames. The video is then released and then I save the gray and masked versions of the two frames. And then we keep iterating through this file loop. So here is the setup of my camera. I think a laptop is placed on this bar area and it is facing the fridge and the front door. 
Now I will demonstrate the smart doorbell algorithm. So here's my email. It's currently empty, empty, but we will be getting some emails with the frames of the detection. So let's go ahead and run the algorithm. So here we have our gray window and here we have our mass window. So in our mass window, that's our region of interest. Uh, that's the fridge and the front door. So now I will walk in front of the camera and it should detect my motion. So now I'm in the hallway of my apartment. I'm outside. I let, let's wait until the algorithm has finished with the video. Okay, that should be enough time. It was a 10 second video. So let's walk back in and as we're walking back in, the detection should detect my motion once again and record another video and collect two more frames. Okay, let's cut the program and let's go check out our email. So we have two emails here with both two frames. And here is the motion detected of me walking outside. And the other email will have the two frames of me walking back inside. Here's me opening the door. So you can see that the motion has been detected by the algorithm. And when we go over here, we can see that in our files, the two 10 second videos have been recorded. There's me walking outside. Now we'll go on for 10 seconds. And here is the second video. This is me walking back inside. Okay, and that is how this algorithm works. Some recommendations I have to improve this system would be to have a better camera. Um, it would definitely be better than my Mac camera. Um, the higher quality cameras have a better resolution and more accurate frames per second. Um, another thing is to have a more accurate kernel size and detector um, threshold that would just detect more wanted movements and filter out any unnecessary things. So thank you very much for listening.